Let's begin our story inside an academy somewhere in the area of Feng City, where students in a classroom argue about what skill, talent, and rank they will get after awakening. But our guy, Zhang Zi, is thinking about his financial problems. He traversed into this world from Earth 10 years ago. To be accurate, his adoptive parents gave him his name. The Zhang couple treated him like their own son. 20 years ago, a mysterious wormhole appeared in the sky of this world, and monsters spawned in different places and destroyed everything. His adoptive parents were one of many people who died in this tragedy. Humanity tried to fight back against the monster. They charged into the gate of demon territory. People discovered that when they became stronger in demon territory, they also became stronger in the real world. Different countries formed stronger elites to fight against demon territory monsters. More often than not, when facing a high-ranking monster, only characters ranked 5 can kill it. Awakena has 7 different ranks, from rank D to rank SSS. When Zhang Zi got home, his sister, Zhang Feng, wished him a happy birthday and reminded him that today was the day he would enter demon territory to awaken his talent. After his sister leaves home, he immediately enters demon territory. When he teleported into the demon territory, the newbie provided ground. A fairy attendant welcomes and guides him to his awakening. After choosing an outfit and a custom name as Rekshasa, he placed his hand in a crystal ball to find out his rank and talent. Much to their surprise, our guy awakened with an SSS rank and has a summoning talent. The SSS rank talent he awakened only exists in Legends, and no one has ever seen it in this world. The highest level it can reach is 5. At level 1, he can summon up to 10 clones. At level 3, he can summon up to 30. After learning his stats, he teleported into demon territory. We can see an altar surrounded by 4 magical barriers in demon territory. The two instructors explained to all newbies that this altar was the only way to teleport back into the world. They also warned the newbie that they could die in demon territory for real. The newbies lined up for their registration and to get their weapons. Our guy didn't tell his true rank or skill. He only told the instructors that he was a D rank and had picked a crossbow as his weapon. The other newbies next in line belittle our guy for being a D rank. After distributing the weapons, the two instructors discovered that only three of those newbies had awakened as a rank or above. Consequently, our guy practiced shooting his crossbow, but after so many attempts, he only hit one bullseye. Moments later, our guy mastered his archery to 80% and left the altar to start hunting. At the first floor monster territory, two newbies were chased by the lava turtle. When the turtle stomped his feet, one of the newbies was hit by the impact and thrown away. The turtle was enraged and about to finish the newbie. Still, suddenly an arrow hit the turtle's head, and he got our guy's attention. The lava turtle chased our guy, and when our guy noticed the barrier, he lured the turtle into getting there. When he got near the barrier, the turtle got electrocuted and followed up by the arrow of our guy. After defeating the lava turtle, he obtained one low-rank energy magic soul. Then he summoned the lava turtle and was very contented with his first summoning. A violent rabbit struck one of the awakeners somewhere in the first floor monster, causing him to kneel in pain. His two companions were preparing to attack the rabbit. Suddenly, our guy, riding his turtle, passed by, he greeted them, and when he left, the three awakeners were confused and jealous of him. The orange-haired guy thought he could tame the rabbit, but before he could turn around, the violent rabbit gave him a wild blow to his face. His two companions quickly attacked the rabbit, confident they could defeat it. When the rabbit jumps back, he activates his berserk mode, and another two rabbits appeared. The three are astounded by what they see. On the other hand, while our guy is peacefully strolling around with his turtle, the three idiots overtake him and warn him to run. When he turned around and saw the rabbits rushing forward, his eyes and mouth widened. The berserk rabbit tries to punch him, but he manages to dodge the attack. He ordered his turtle to use his tail to attack, and the turtle quickly followed his command and managed to hit one of the rabbits. Because of the slowness of the turtle, the violent rabbit can easily hit it. Even so, the turtle makes an effort to fight back and succeeds in hitting their opponents, then our guy fires an arrow. The berserk rabbit lands a critical blow to the turtle's head. Still, our guy will not allow his first team to be killed, so he shoots an arrow at the berserk rabbit and manages to hit it. When the berserk rabbit moved to another position, our guy ordered his turtle to return to the summoning array to be safe. The turtle didn't obey him, and because of his eagerness to protect his master, the turtle leveled up and quickly defeated the violent rabbits. Our guy obtained the three magic souls of the violent rabbit and quickly summoned them. Now, our guy had four beasts. Our guy Zhang Zi, with the nickname Rekshasa, received a message from the class group to go to the altar for an important announcement. At the altar, a man informed the newbies that they couldn't handle the boss Dark Shadow Wolf on the first floor, so he invited an elite to lead the newbies in defeating the boss's Dark Shadow Wolf on the first floor and open the gate to the second floor. The pretty elite warrior introduces herself as Liu Yuying, nicknamed Moon Shadow, after they all accept Moon Shadow's invitation. 
the newbies led by Moon Shadow started their venture on Demon Territory's first floor. Rekshasa still doesn't have the plan to show his ability to others. Then, all of a sudden, monsters appeared. Moon Shadow used her sword to kill each monster with just one move. Later at night, they reached the place where the boss's Dark Shadow Wolf spawned. Moon Shadow warns them to stay behind her and not make any drastic moves if they don't want to die. Moments later, when the boss Dark Shadow Wolf stepped out from the portal, purple fog filled the place and the wolf couldn't be seen because of this fog. Still, Moon Shadow is calmly sensing her surroundings and waiting for the wolf to attack. It didn't take long before the wolf made his first move. The wolf with sharp teeth quickly rushed forward to attack her. But the unfazed warrior effortlessly dodged the wolf's attack, then struck the wolf with her light blade slash. She easily defeated the boss's dark shadow wolf with just one blow. The newbies feel relieved after witnessing her ability. But it didn't take long, and another boss came out of the portal. Moon Shadow was shocked after seeing that a boss spawned quickly, knowing that it would take one hour before a new boss could spawn again. The worst is that the new boss spawned is an elite Dark Shadow Wolf. Moon Shadow ordered the stunned newbies to run, and they quickly followed her order. Rekshasa is concerned for her, and he is confused if Moon Shadow can handle an elite boss with the power of five normal bosses. The elite wolf swiftly attacked her, still, she dodged the wolf's attack and followed with a light blade slash, but her damage was too low for the elite wolf. The elite wolf made another move and rapidly attacked her. She tried her best to dodge the attack but failed and received an injury that caused her to bleed. Because of the damage, her health will decrease by 1% every 10 seconds. And if the bleeding didn't stop, she would die. Rekshasa noticed the fight, he planned to help the warrior and tame the elite wolf. One of the newbies warns him to stop looking around and continue running, but our guy ignores him. Back to the fight scene, Moon Shadow struggles to defeat the elite wolf. She can't believe that an elite boss on the first floor could be this much strong. Still, she manages to reduce its health in half. The elite wolf swiftly attacked her, but she dodged the attack. She tried to attack the elite wolf using her light blade slash, but she failed to use the skill. Her body became weak due to much bleeding. The elite wolf noticed her helpless body and took advantage of it. The elite wolf used the dark shadow rip to injure the girl and jumped forward to finish her. Suddenly, multiple arrows hit the wolf's body, and our guy gets the elite wolf's attention. The elite wolf chased him, and our guy planned to lure the wolf into a more spacious place to summon his beast. But he didn't get far, and the elite wolf almost caught up with him. Before the elite wolf caught him, our guy turned around and summoned his beasts. On the other hand, while Moon Shadow was dressing her wounds, a woman appeared and used her green blessing to heal Moon Shadow. It was Princess, with another woman and two men in the back. These are her teammates. They scolded her because she faced the elite boss alone. A man with a strange backpack noticed that the elite boss was not in the area. Moon Shadow informs them that our guy has lured the elite wolf, and they need to hurry to help him. On the other hand, Rakshasa and his beasts continue to fight the elite wolf. Since the three violent rabbits all attacked the elite wolf simultaneously, the slow lava turtle was free to attack. But defeating an elite wolf is difficult. The elite boss used its dark shadow rip to damage the four beasts. A violent rabbit of our guy, who is behind the elite wolf, was able to level up to the second level. Our guy ordered his beast to surround and attack the elite wolf. The elite wolf slashed the turtle, but it didn't die because of the size of its health. Then he slashed a rabbit, causing it to die, and he followed it up with a slash on another rabbit, and it also died. But a rabbit that had leveled up earlier behind the elite wolf was able to deliver a blow and followed up with a powerful attack from the turtle's tail, causing the elite boss to be defeated. Our guy felt relieved after defeating the elite boss. He obtained four medium rank magic soul orbs from the boss, including a wolf fang necklace and wolf bone dagger. Because his fighting style is not close combat, he plans to sell the dagger and save the money for his sister's medical fees. Then he summoned the dark shadow wolf. And our guy was very amazed to have a beast that was invincible on the first floor. Moments later, Moon Shadow's team reached the place where our guy fought but they only found traces of the battle. Moon Shadow's companions thought that our guy might have died, and Moon Shadow couldn't help but blame herself for what happened and planned to tell Teacher Liu why what happened. On the other hand, our guy is already at home. He opened his inventory and then sold his other loot. He tried to absorb a strength magic soul orb, and it resulted in an increase in his strength. The next day, his sister prepared food for him. While brushing his teeth, our guy thought his sister's artificial kidney was declining, and their rent must be paid on time. He also wonders if he will tell his sister that he was awakened as an SSS rank. To avoid his sister's concern, he decides not to tell. While eating, his concerned sister told him to avoid going to the dangerous demon territory and instead look for another job. She also said she would take care of the rent and had a method. Before leaving the house, our guy told his sister not to worry about the rent and focus on studying. When he arrived at the academy, he noticed all his magic soul orbs had been sold. 
the money he earned was enough for his sister's artificial kidney. When their teacher entered the room with Liu Yuying or Moon Shadow, the teacher asked them who had helped Liu Yuying lure the boss away last night. But no one answered, and our guy had no plans to expose himself. When the teacher and Liu Yuying left, one of his classmates, Wang Yang, told him that he knew who helped Moon Shadow, and it was Rakshasa. Fortunately, our guy was lucky because he wore a mask, so Wang Yang didn't recognize him. Then Wang Yang invited him to join him tonight to fight the monsters on the first floor of the demon territory. But our guy refused and said he still had work. When he arrived at work, a group was praising one of their colleagues, Zhen King, for being on a rank. But Zheng King humbly replied that more experts are stronger than him. After cleaning the floor, our guy tested the strength of his punch. Then he noticed that his score increased by 197 because he had absorbed the strength magic soul orb. Then he received a message from his sister saying that she was going to his friend's house. Subsequently, our guy went to the demon territory and noticed that his summon team still had seven slots. That's why he decided to fill it first before entering the second floor. He didn't waste time and summoned his dark shadow wolf and they started hunting to fill the slot in his summon team. A few hours later, our hero has completed his beasts and is ready to go to the second floor. Before he left, he heard a scream asking for help and it turned out to be his classmate Wang Yang with two girls being chased by other groups of people. Once identity is exposed in demon territory, bastards can make use of demon territory's fake identity. Even if someone calls the police, the case will take a lot of work to solve. Often, after handing over the money, the hostage is also hard to save, because the kidnappers will choose to kill them to prevent their identity from being exposed. While running away from the marauders, Wang Yang begged them to leave him alone. But the group leader ignored him and instead used his muddy swamp skill to trap the three. After being trapped, an axe was pointed at Wang Yang's neck, and the leader threatened him that if he did not want to die, he would give him the contact details of his family. But Wang Yang emphatically said he would not give any information about his family. Because of what he said, the leader tried to cut off one of his hands. And when he raised the axe to cut Wang Yang's hand, an arrow suddenly hit his arm. When they noticed our guy, they didn't waste any more time and chased after him. Our guy lured the marauders to a place with only one entrance. When he reached the right location, he stopped and confronted them. Our guy asked them, when they kill someone in demon territory, don't other people outside know? The leader confidently replied that no one would know. After our guy heard his answer, he summoned his beasts. When the marauders saw this, they were surprised and amazed at the skill of our guy. But that's not all, when the dark shadow wolf came out, they were shocked and their eyes filled with fear. Our guy then ordered his beasts to attack. The beasts quickly eliminated the marauders, and our guy then obtained a berserk talisman that he could use in emergencies as well as a lot of loot from them. Then he went to the gate of the second floor. Before he could enter, Wang Yang's group came to thank him. Wang Yang wanted to pay him one million for his help, but our guy refused it so as not to reveal his identity. Then our guy said goodbye to them and entered the second floor. When he reached the second floor, he noticed that the place was a cave. Then he read the manual book. The second floor was inhabited by three types of monsters. The poison spider, the bloodthirst bat, and the boss devour heaven frog. And like before, he had no plans to join the others and continued his venture. It wasn't long before he encountered a poison spider. He summoned his beasts, and his two rabbits rushed first. Unfortunately, one of them was caught in a spider's web and poison. Then they attacked together and defeated the poison spider immediately. He received two low-rank energy soul orbs from the spider and immediately summoned the spider. After checking the status of his new beast, he continued on his venture. While walking, suddenly, two bloodthirst bats attacked from behind. Because of his sense's sharpness, our guy could turn around and summon his beasts. His beasts attacked at the same time and were able to deal damage to the enemy. But the two bats retaliated and bit the rest of his beasts. The bat quickly recovers its health by sucking blood. Because of this, our guy summons his spider to counter the opposing bat. The spider unleashed several poison attacks and managed to hit the bats. They attacked at the same time and quickly defeated the bat. After fighting the two bats, several of his beasts also died. He summoned the two bats and then went to the second floor boss. Upon arriving at the place, he noticed people arguing with a group of people charging 10 energy soul orbs before fighting the boss monster. When the man said that only one slot was left for the boss fight, our guy quickly raised his hand and approached the man. He pretended to the man that he was rich and would pay with 10 gold bars after defeating the boss monster. The man allowed him and threatened that if he did not give the gold bars, there would be a consequence that he did not expect in return. Then they went to the boss monster. Upon arriving at the place, the man informed his leader, money-earning superhero, that the people had been gathered and could start. Wait, wait, wait. Before continuing our story, let's shorten the new character's name. 
let's call him Mess. Alright, let's get back to our story. After hearing what his teammate said, Mess stood up, and they went inside the boss's hideout. Our guy was amazed by the size of the cave, and when he saw the boss devour Heaven Frog, he was also surprised by its huge size. When Mess took off his coat, he told those behind him not to come near, and he was about to start. Mess didn't waste any more time and started his move. He jumped towards the boss frog and ignited his fist. When he got closer to the boss frog, he showered it with his fire fist. On the other hand, our guy and those behind him are amazed at what they see. Back to the fight scene, the boss frog retaliated with a fireball, but Mess easily dodged it. Mess unleashed multiple flaming punches on the head of the boss frog. On the other hand, our guy is waiting for the right time when he will attack to steal the kill. Back to the fight scene, Mess unleashed his finishing blow, and while doing so, our guy suddenly released his arrow to steal the kill. When Mess noticed his attack, he stopped punching the boss frog. Then Mess teammates said not to let our guy steal the kill from the boss frog. Mess instructed them to ignore our guy because he wanted to see how the boss frog would burn him to death. While our guy continues to dodge the boss frog's attack, the three men talk about our guy's greed and arrogance. He risked his life just to snatch the rewards from the boss. Even if he manages to defeat the boss, he cannot escape safely. People who want to make money will not let him go. Our guy summoned his beasts, and the people who saw it were surprised. Mess, on the other hand, was confused because he had just seen such a skill. Our guy's beasts attacked simultaneously, and due to the damage received by the boss frog, it was utterly weakened. Then our guy released his finishing shot. When the boss frog was defeated, it dropped a lot of loot. While he was picking up the loot, Mess Group approached him and told him to hand over everything, including the 10 kilogram gold bars, otherwise, he could not leave the area safely. Mess informed him that his skills were interesting but useless. Then he quickly punched a bat using his fire fist, and when it fell to the ground, he stepped on it. He mocked our guy, saying that no matter how many beasts he brings out, it's just trash for an expert like him. Our guy got furious and decided to end Mess's group. Before anything bad could happen, a man from the Demon Territory Management Bureau's discipline inspector team named Natural Law arrived. He warns Mess group not to do bad things and has evidence proving what happened earlier. He asked them to surrender to the Demon Territory Management Bureau. Mess just smiled, then they surrounded the two. Natural Law told Rekshasa not to be afraid and that he would protect him, adding that our guy's talent is very useful and has a bright future. He plans to introduce our guy to his superior after he catches Mess group. When a man rushed forward, Natural Law used his ice ray, causing the man to freeze. Mess ordered one of his companions to charge and finish the two. The man attacked with his weapon, but Natural Law dodged the attack. After dodging it, he followed it up with a kick to the man's body, causing him to fall away. Then Natural Law warns Mess group to surrender, but Mess ignores him. Instead, Lao equips Mess with magic resistance, and then Mess makes his first move. He charged forward towards Natural Law with his fire fist. Before Mess could get close, Natural Law hit him with his ice ray, but it had no effect on Mess due to the magic resistance that Lao placed. Lao's magic resistance skill is a B-ranked talent. The target will have a 100% reduction in magic damage for 10 seconds. When Natural Law discovered that his magic was ineffective against the enemy, he ordered our guy to run. But on the other hand, Mess is determined to finish them off. Mess unleashed his fire fist, and when it was about to hit Natural Law, fortunately, our guy was able to summon his beasts. He told Natural Law to leave the fight to him. Then he summoned his Dark Shadow Wolf and the Devour Heaven Frog. The two men couldn't believe our guy's ability when they saw this. But Mess is unfazed and confident while in a fighting position. The frog threw fire, but Mess just dodged it. After dodging, Mess jumped up and gave the frog a mighty blow. Almost 75% of the frog's health was immediately lost in just one blow. When our guy realized the strength of Mess, he didn't think twice and took out the talisman. He threw it to his Dark Shadow Wolf, and after absorbing the talisman, the wolf went into berserk mode. When Mess realized he was no match for the wolf, he quickly fled to escape. But it seems it's too late for him. Because of the berserk mode, the wolf's abilities doubled, and he quickly used his Dark Shadow Rip. And then, he followed up with a multiple claw attack that the opponent couldn't see because of the rapid movement. Mess fell to his knees from the injuries he received from the wolf. Then the wolf attacked Mess' companions. Moments later, Natural Law's companions arrived and captured Mess' group. While our guy was looting the items that Mess dropped, he noticed an invitation letter. This was a certificate to enter death territory. But our guy didn't pay much attention to it. Instead, he immediately absorbed the agility and strength magic soul orb. Natural Law approached him and invited him to join the Demon Territory Management Bureau. But our guy rejected his offer and said that he has no plans to join any group at the moment. Natural Law gave him his contact number so that if our guy changed his mind, he could be contacted easily. 
and when our guy was about to enter the gate of the third floor, natural law reminded him that no matter how strong he becomes in the future, don't forget that he still has Dazia blood and don't do anything that could harm the country and its citizens. Our guy told him not to worry because he is also a citizen of Dazia. Then he entered the third floor. Upon arriving at the third floor, our guy noticed that there were fewer people on the third floor compared to the lower floor. Our guy discovered that Goblin Warrior and Goblin Mage live on the third floor. When our guy noticed the time, he decided to go home. Afterward, when he got home, our guy noticed the house was dark, and his sister, Jiang Feng, was not there when he looked in the room. He thought Jiang Feng might be at her friend's house. He noticed the missed call when he opened his phone and immediately called back. He spoke to Jiang Feng's friend on the other line, and Jiang Feng's friend informed him to hurry to the Yunding Club dance hall because something had happened to Jiang Feng. Our guy didn't waste time and hurried to the said place. Two security personnel stopped him when he arrived in front of the club. Because our guy was pissed off, he quickly knocked down the two security guards and went straight inside the club. Inside the club, the balding man Wu Tancheng forces Jiang Feng to accompany his young master Chen. He threw the card containing $10,000 at Jiang Feng and belittled her femininity. A woman intervened and informed Mr. Wu that Jiang Feng doesn't drink, instead, she offered herself to accompany the young master. But Mr. Wu just pushed her away, then approached Jiang Feng and told her face to face to serve his special guest well. But before he could finish what he was saying, our guy arrived and angrily threatened Mr. Wu not to try to touch his sister if he didn't want to have two broken legs. The other girl discovered among the murmuring that the ones causing a scandal in the club were the Tianxing group which has a lot of influence in Jiangbei. Our guy picked up the card and threw it back to Mr. Wu. But before it hit Mr. Wu's face, a fleeting shadow came, and it turned out to be young Master Chen, who quickly caught the card with only two fingers. Mr. Wu ordered his guards to break our guy's legs. The guards followed his order and they attacked towards our guy. But before they could exchange blows, Lady Zhang arrived. Lady Zhang knows Mr. Wu has no good intentions, so she plans to humiliate him. Mr. Wu said that they were not satisfied with the service of Lady Zhang's staff. Lady Zhang said to let it be. But Mr. Wu disagreed and noted that Tangfeng City should be replaced by a new leader because the mere staff needed to be controlled. Lady Zhang said Mr. Wu is welcome in Tanfeng City whenever he wants to have fun. But if he would only bully the people of Tanfeng, he should return to Jiangbei. The people get hyped and agree with Lady Zhang. Mr. Wu mocked people and said that only the stronger have the right to enjoy life. He even emphasized that he would take Zhang Feng with him. Because of what she heard, Lady Zhang was overwhelmed and tried to kick Mr. Wu from behind. But before her attack hit the baldy man, she was quickly pushed away by young Master Chen who is an S rank. Mr. Wu ordered his guards to take our guy's sister, but before they could get hold of the girl, our guy needed a guard in the face. Chen was amazed at the quick reaction of our guy and introduced himself. He is Chen Feng, a third year student at Longhu Senior High. Then our guy Zhang Zi, from Tanfeng City, 5th Senior High School, also introduced himself. Chen offered our guy to compare their notes, but our guy was not interested and turned to leave. Before taking the next step, he felt Chen's thrown bottle. Our guy quickly kicks the bottle, and Chen informs him they can't leave without his permission. From behind, Lady Zhang reminded our guy to be careful because Chen was very strong. Our guy told his sister to stand aside for a bit, and they would go home after he dealt with Chen. Chen charged first, using his fist with extraordinary strength. Our guy dodged it and followed up with a punch that Chen blocked using his arm. Chen mocked our guy, saying that he was still weak. However, he was surprised when our guy suddenly disappeared from his sight, and he couldn't believe how fast it was. Our guy punched him from behind, but Chen blocked it with his arm. Because of our guy's agile movement, he could not throw a punch, instead, he was the one receiving punches from our guy. After the attacks, our guy jumped back. He teased Chen, saying that he could no longer raise his arm. Mr. Wu told his young master that they had to retreat. Before retreating, Chen reminded our guy that he would return again after being accepted to the Great King Martial Academy. But our guy also aims for a Great King Martial Academy, and they might become alumni together. He again teased Chen to look for him once he was accepted at the Great King Martial Academy. Chen then left, annoyed. Lady Zhang invited our guy to her office to discuss things. At the office, Lady Zhang handed our guy $500,000 as a thank you. But our guy did not accept it. Lady Zhang explained that the money she gave was in exchange for asking our guy for help. She wants our guy to help her in the coming troubles brought by the Tianxin group. Because of his sister's plea, our guy accepted the money and Lady Zhang's offer. The next day, at the academy, after the class, Wang Yang hurriedly approached our guy and informed Zhang Zi of what had happened to him on the first floor demon territory. 
After talking with Wang Yang, Zheng Hao approached Zhang Zi. He introduced himself to our guy, then he asked our guy if he was the one who cleaned the martial room yesterday. When Zheng Hao found out that Zhang Zi was the one who cleaned the martial room yesterday, he excitedly asked our guy if he had seen the person who used the dynamometer yesterday. But Zhang Zi clarified that he didn't notice and then hurried away. Zhang Zi felt relieved because Zhang Hao didn't suspect him. At home, Zhang Zi told his sister not to go out and informed her that he would go to the magic domain. When our guy got to the magic domain on the third floor, he saw that his summon team had five empty spots. He decided to hunt two types of goblins first before arranging his summon team slot. Our guy's thoughts were interrupted when he heard someone asking for help. He saw the three men, who were having a hard time fighting the two goblins. Knowing that they wouldn't stand a chance of winning if they fought the goblin, the three men ran away. Our guy summoned his frog. Then the frog immediately attacked with a flame attack directly on the goblin, quickly followed by an attack from the lava tortoise. Still, Zhang Zi was shocked when the Peltace goblin blocked his tortoise's attack. Then the Pelting Goblin also attacked from a distance, and its high damage quickly defeated our guy's tortoise. When our guy noticed the severe damage from the Pelting Goblin, he ordered his frog to change targets. The frog directly blasts the Pelting Goblin with fire and almost drains its health from the damage received. Our guy quickly summons his wolf to finish off the Pelting Goblin, but he was very surprised when the Pelting Goblin ran away. Because of what was seen, our guy sweated a kilo of rice. That's a joke, guys. I hope you sweat a kilo of rice too. Anyway, let's get back to our story. Our guy summoned his level 3 violent hare to hunt down the fleeing pelting goblin. Now that only the peltace goblin is left, our guy is confident he can easily defeat it. His wolf and frog attack together, using their respective skills to finish off the peltace goblin. Ten minutes later, our guy defeated the peltace goblin. Then he summoned it. Our guy learned that even though the Peltace Goblin has no skill, its attributes are higher than his level 3 Violent Hair. Speaking of the Violent Hair, since it chased the Pelting Goblin, it has not returned yet. And suddenly, a notification pops up with a message that his Violent Hair has been defeated. A few seconds later, our guy noticed a battalion of goblins from behind going toward him. Knowing that he had no chance of winning against the number of opponents, our guy quickly ran back to the altar. When he reached the altar, he saw that the goblins had stopped chasing him. The goblin knew they would get electrocuted if they got close to the barrier. Our guy was amazed at the strange intelligence of the goblins. Before leaving, a goblin left him a message using its middle finger. Our guy thought that a goblin's talent was unique, and when they escaped, they called for reinforcement. Our guy thought of a solution to prevent the goblin from calling reinforcements. He didn't waste time and returned to the forest to hunt goblins. After seeing his target, our guy immediately used his new combo to make it easier to finish off the goblins. He first brought out his lava tortoise and peltace goblin to attack the peltace goblin, then his wolf and frog to attack the pelting goblin. When the peltace goblin was defeated, the pelting goblin ran away. Because our guy had memorized the behavior of the goblins, he is ready for what will happen next. He summoned his venom spider and used its web to catch the pelting goblin. When they caught the pelting goblin, he pissed him off and said, why didn't you run and call for reinforcements? Then our guy continued hunting the goblins using the same tactics. Because of the fight, our guy lost a level 3 tortoise. Moments later, our guy has already filled his summon slot consisting of 7 goblins, a venom spider, and 2 bosses. Now our guy is ready to face the 3rd floor boss. Before our guy went to the boss's camp, he passed by a man with yellow hair looking for companions to fight the boss. He called our guy and asked him to join his raid on the boss. Because our guy knew his scheme, he did not hesitate to reject the yellow-haired man's offer. Then he continued walking to head to the boss's camp. Upon arriving outside the camp, our guy noticed that there were very few enemies in the camp. He summoned his beasts, and together they attacked the goblins outside the camp. While the beasts continued to fight, our guy entered the camp gate. He picked up the loot and then opened the guidebook. Before he could read the book, he heard screams from inside the camp asking for help. When our guy peeked, he saw people running for their lives, while the goblins thrill in exterminating people. As the battle continues inside the camp, our guy notices that the people he sees now are the people who were recruited earlier by the yellow-haired man. But the yellow-haired man was not in the ongoing battle. After the goblins defeated all the people inside the camp, our guy raised the curtain and picked up the other loot. While picking up the loot, a dagger suddenly flew before our guy, causing the goblins to notice him. The goblins rushed at him, but he quickly jumped back and summoned his peltace goblins. Then he jumped and summoned his venom spider. He shot an arrow, and then his poison spider released a web directly at the boss goblin. After this, he ordered the peltace to directly attack the boss goblin. But unfortunately, almost all of their simultaneous attacks were destroyed by the boss goblin using the whirlwind fist. 
but our guy didn't give up and let his ranged beasts attack simultaneously. Unfortunately, their attacks are only blocked by the boss goblin using two swords. The enemy's pelting goblins retaliated, and our guy Peltes could block the enemy's attacks. Our guy wonders if he will retreat from the fight. But before he could make a decision, someone suddenly attacked him with a dagger and managed to injure our guy. It turned out to be Kiss of Death, the man earlier who was recruiting newbies to raid the boss. Our guy discovered that Kiss of Death's talent is stealth, as long as he didn't attack or get injured, he can stay invisible. In addition to that, this man's scheme is to find newbies to recruit and join the boss raid. At that time, when the goblins have destroyed all the people he brought, he will then collect the dropped loot. Now that our guy has two opponents, he wonders how to get through his current situation. While thinking, the boss suddenly attacked his Peltaste. Our guy summoned his Venom Spider and it spewed a web at Kiss of Death, causing him to be trapped. Then our guy summoned back his beasts and left Kiss of Death trapped in the web. The boss rushes in to finish Kiss of Death. Fortunately, before he was hit, he was able to use his skill and become invincible. The boss goblin is left confused. Our hero returned again and shot Kiss of Death using an arrow. Due to the injury of Kiss of Death, he became visible. When the boss goblin saw him, it immediately attacked Kiss of Death from behind. Our guy laughed at him and said he didn't need to see him, he only needed to see the web. Then our guy shot his arrow towards Kiss of Death, and was followed by a behind-the-back attack by the boss goblin, resulting in his death. Our guy once again summons his beast to face the boss goblin. Before attacking the boss goblin, our guy first picked up some loot. He put on a white silk glove with plus 50 damage and tried this on his opponent. He pulled his bow and released the arrow directly at the boss. Unexpectedly, his attack did no damage. Instead, he got the boss goblin's attention. The boss goblin charged furiously using his whirlwind slash, sending two peltastes flying away. The boss attacks again directly at our guy, the spider releases a web at the enemy's feet, and our guy jumps back to avoid the boss's attack. Then his short-range attackers disperse, and the long-range attackers attack the boss directly at the same time. Because of our guy's tactics, the boss is having a hard time blocking all of their attacks, causing his health to decrease. Again, our guy ordered his long-range attackers to attack, and this attack resulted in the defeat of the boss goblin. After defeating the boss goblin, behind the king goblin's throne, the gate to the fourth floor opens. After collecting all the loot, he summoned the boss goblin. When our guy was about to enter the gate, a group from the Magic Domain Administration suddenly arrived. They surrounded our guy and accused him of being the kiss of death, someone who deceives people. A woman told our guy to come with them and put down his weapons. Because our guy knew that the outcome would not be good if he chose to fight. He just followed what they said. He raised his hands. But before they arrested him, natural law arrived, and he had already been promoted to section chief. Natural law informed his companions that he knew our guy was a good person. Natural law asked our guy if he saw the kiss of death and its victims. Our guy informs them that all the victims of kiss of death are dead because of the fight with the goblins, and they will not be able to see kiss of death because he has finished him. Natural law and its companions couldn't believe our guy had defeated an s rank kiss of death. Our guy showed the records of those he killed to prove what he said, and when they saw that kiss of death was in indeed one on the killed list, they were shocked. Natural Law was once again impressed with our guy and thanked him for eliminating a threat to people. Natural Law informed our guy that Kiss of Death is a member of a criminal organization called Dawn. The Magic Domain Administration team has constantly been investigating this organization, but because of how covert they are, they have yet to make any substantial progress. He reminded our guy to be careful because he killed a Dawn member and suggested joining his group. But just like before, he rejected Natural Law's offer and entered the gate. After our guy left, Natural Law was still confident that one day he would persuade our guy to join his team. When our guy arrived on the fourth floor, he noticed people complaining because they were trapped by a group of magic administrators inside the altar due to the sudden appearance of a death zone on the said floor. Hearing this, our guy remembered the invitation letter that he loots from Mess. Since there is no record of the death zone in the magic domain guidebook, a man from the administration group explained it. The death zone is another dimension that randomly appears on any magic domain floor. Due to the sudden appearance of the death zone on the fourth floor, the difficulty is now comparable to the tenth floor. After explaining, there are still people who don't believe him. So the man decided to let go of anyone who wanted to come out from the altar. However, they have to bear the consequences. Because of the stubbornness of a man, he still goes out of the barrier. It didn't take long, and the man was running back, terrified. When he reached the altar, he informed them that the monsters had mutated and confirmed that a death zone had appeared. Because of this, the man from the administration suggested that no one goes to the fourth floor until the death zone was completely gone. 
the Awakeners followed his advice and logged out, including our guy. On the other hand, on the 22nd floor, a man is facing a huge titan zombie. With a smile on his face, he pulled out his sword, ran at the titan zombie, and slashed it several times. Using just one attack, he was able to defeat the titan zombie. After picking up the magical soul orb, he received a message. After opening the message, he discovered that our guy nicknamed Asura had killed the kiss of death. Because of what he read, the man became interested in our guy. When the boss came out, the man calmly approached the monster. On the other hand, inside Zhang Zi's house, our guy told his sister to stay home and that he would only meet with Pan Pan because she had a job offer for our guy. After they talked, he said goodbye to his sister. When he arrived at the said place, Pan Pan greeted him with a smile, then they entered a warehouse. Pan Pan introduces our guy to his cousin Lu Kai. Lu Kai asked if he was interested in joining their team to earn money. Our guy informed him that he wants a job, but he doesn't know what kind of work they will do. Lu Kai explained that they were going to a very dangerous place in the enemy-occupied zone to get treasure where various monsters lived. Despite the danger of the place, they don't care as long as they earn money. When our guy learned that he would earn 300k from the said job, he thought adding the money to his savings would be enough for his sister's kidney operation. He didn't hesitate and accepted Lu Kai's offer. After our guy agreed, Lu Kai announced that their boss doubled the reward they would receive for the mission to be done. Lu Kai's three companions get excited with the good news. The yellow-haired man is Madman, the fat one is Steel, and the bald one is Lao Ba. Lu Kai informed them that their mission was to take the calligraphy and painting scroll from the Five Dynasties period, from the Jiangdong Museum, and they will meet the next day exactly at 4 a.m. The next day, before our guy left, his sister made him breakfast. Jiang Feng said their new neighbor gave them an apple. When our guy was leaving, he advised his sister not to accept anything from a stranger. While on the way, our guy checked his status. Because he knew that the job was very dangerous, he absorbed the remaining demon soul orbs before he went to sleep last night. The current strength of our guy is 14 points, and his agility is 15 points. Upon arriving at the disgust place, Lu Kai handed him a dead chicken. And Lu Kai informs him that he can use the dead chicken in times of danger because the monsters in the Devil's Cave like to eat corpses. When they reach the Jiangdong Museum, they notice that there was no entrance. Madman climbs the boulders to find the entrance. When he saw the entrance, Lao Ba punched the big stones that blocked the entrance. Then their team continued to search for the treasure. Upon arriving at the main exhibition hall, they split up to speed up the search for the treasure. After a while, our guy found a treasure that they were looking for. After Lu Kai put the treasure inside the bag, our guy noticed that Steel was not there. Lu Kai tried to radio Steel, but there was no response. Lu Kai informed his companions that they could not stay in the area for too long because it was very dangerous. He ordered his companion to leave a message for Steel. Unbeknownst to them, there is a monster observing from the broken ceiling. As they were leaving, our guy heard a noise from behind. It turned out to be the second level monster from the Devil's Cave that jumped down from the ceiling. Lao Ba rushed quickly with his knife, but his attack was ineffective due to the thickness of the monster's skin. The monster unleashed a powerful blow and Lao Ba prepared to block it. Lao Ba was thrown away and suffered a broken arm. Our guy took the dead chicken from his bag and threw it at the monster. Then they ran away. But the monster is still chasing them. When Madman realized the monster could catch them, he removed his shade and told Lu Kai to leave first, and he would take care of the monster. He took out his gun, fired at the monster, and rushed toward the monster. Lao Ba took out the grenade, ran to the monster, and told Lu Kai to leave, then threw the grenade into the mouth of the monster, and it resulted in an explosion. Lu Kai cried at the sacrifice made by his teammate, but in this kind of situation, there is no time to feel hurt. He grabbed Zhang Zi by the hand and ran to the entrance. When they came out, Lu Kai was stunned to see the monsters before him. He threw the bag to Zhang Zi and instructed him to take care of his cousin Pan Pan. He fired at the monster and rushed towards it. While doing so, he fired again. When he was close, he jumped back, slid to the side, took out the grenade, then threw it at the monster, and the result was a big explosion. After the explosion, the monster appeared behind Lu Kai. The monster's big hand grabbed him and threw him away. He hit the wall, and then the beast rushed towards him. From a distance, Zhang Zi could see the monster's attack. And in an instant, Zhang Zen was immediately in front of Lu Kai and met the beast's attack with his fist. The beast flew away, and Lu Kai was amazed at what he had witnessed. With so many monsters, they have no chance of winning if they all rush to them. But Lu Kai explained to our guy that the monsters in the Devil's Cave have distinct characteristics. They don't snatch each other's prey, unless the monster they were fighting gave up. Because of what he learned, our guy got the courage to fight the monster. Zhang Zi confidently faced the monster. When the monster attacked using both hands, Zhang Zi dodged it, jumped up, and gave a blow to the face of the monster, then he smoothly landed on the ground, and the monster fell unconscious. Now that our guy has knocked down one of the monsters, only three remain. 
Our guy is optimistic that he will defeat the remaining monsters no matter what. The monster rushed towards him, and our guy got ready to fight. But before the monster could get close, someone stepped on his shoulder and jumped toward the monster. The woman in a purple suit with pink hair and eye shades fearlessly fought the monster. He used two consecutive flash kicks, causing the monster to fall. Then she told our guy to get in the car with Liu Kai. While the pink-haired woman was fighting the beast, Zhang Zi was helping Liu Kai go to the car. Knowing that the two were on board, the pink-haired woman rushed to the car, and the driver quickly drove the vehicle away from the monster. The driver informed his female captain that if they led the monster toward the city wall, the outcome would not be good, and Tanfeng City may be put in danger. Because of what she heard, the pink-haired woman told our guy to help her, then handed a bag to our guy. When our guy opened the bag, he saw that it was full of flashbangs. Then our guy helps the girl throw the flashbangs, so monsters can't follow them. When they escaped from the monsters, the woman asked our guy's name. After our guy introduced himself, the woman reminded him not to go to the enemy-occupied zone again unless he became a magic domain fighter. Upon arriving at the city wall, the two got out of the car. Zhang Zi asked Liu Kai who those people were. Liu Kai isn't sure either, but he thinks those are magic domain fighters. Our guy turned around and regretted that he had lost the scroll. At the hospital, while our guy was going up the stairs, he bumped into a man coming down the stairs. He stopped when he felt the person he bumped into was familiar, and he suspected it was Steel. Our guy followed Steel. A little while later, Steel stopped in an alley and was talking to someone on the phone. Moments later, two men came and approached Steel, and the man with the cigarette asked if Steel had the item he wanted. Steel informs him that he has the item. The old man, known as Boss Lai, took the scroll to examine. After checking the scroll, Boss Lai told Steel that just to have 3 million for himself, he was able to betray the teammates who had worked with him for more than a decade. While the three were talking, our guy quietly listened and observed them. The bodyguard showed an attaché case containing 3 million. When Steel saw the money, he immediately took the attaché case from the bald man and turned to leave, and said to survive, one must be ruthless. The bald man pulled out a gun and pointed it at the back of Steel's head. When Steel turned around, the bald man fired the gun, causing Steel to die. Our guy couldn't believe what he had witnessed, he was curious about who Boss Lai was and thought to go home. Moments later, when Zhang Zi arrived in front of the house, his sister greeted him with a smile. When they were about to enter their house, a man wearing glasses and a cap came out of the door of their neighbor's house. It turns out that this is what Zhang Feng calls uncle, who gave her an apple earlier. The man greeted our guy with a smile, and our guy was stunned when he noticed the scar on his face, similar to the scar on the face of Boss Lai's bodyguard. Our guy greeted the neighbor with a smile and thanked him for the apple that was given earlier. When Zhang Feng's invited the neighbor to have dinner at their house, our guy stopped his sister from speaking and told the neighbor that he was tired and that they should eat together next time. Then the siblings went inside their house. After closing the door, the neighbor noticed the sudden change in our guy's behavior. Inside the house, Zhang Zi is still thinking about the resemblance of the neighbor's scar to Boss Lai's bodyguard. To answer his suspicion, Zhang Zi said to his sister that he was going out for a while and warned her not to leave the house. Zhang Zi went through the window to go to the neighbor's house. He opened the bedroom window and went through there to enter the room. He peeked under the bed, and he noticed a box. Our guy took it and opened it to find out the contents. Our guy saw a certificate and discovered that this was indeed Boss Lai's bodyguard, Huang Hanfei. More than that, his neighbor is a magic domain fighter. Our guy is shaking with anger and wants to know what Hanfei's plan is. When our guy felt someone was coming, he immediately hid under the bed. When Hanfei opened the door, he told the intruder to get out. Hanfei knew that the intruder was still inside his room. He unlocked his gun and fired at our guy's location. Fortunately, before the bullet hit Zhang Zi, he was teleported to the magic domain. Hanfei kicked the bed and saw that our guy was gone. He thought the magic domain opened at precisely 8 o'clock, and our guy was probably there. He maniacally said that he would wait for our guy. On the other hand, while our guys were floating in the magic domain, he thought that Hanfei had discovered him and needed to strengthen his power within 12 hours to match Hanfei's strength when he returned. Our guy chose to go to the fourth floor. Upon arriving at the fourth floor, our guy noticed that the death zone still hadn't disappeared because there were still barriers around the altar. Our guy finds out that the death zone will soon appear. Many strong people have prepared to enter the death zone. And to enter the death zone, an invitation is needed. And the death zone will only disappear when the boss inside the death zone is defeated. A moment later, when the death zone opened, our guy entered. Upon arriving at the death zone, our guy noticed the people who entered the area were from different nations. And suddenly, someone grabbed his shoulder and called him. It turned out to be Yu Ying, with the nickname Moon Shadow. The girl was so happy to see our guy again. She told our guy that he had saved her life last time, and she's been looking for our guy to repay his kindness, but she could never find him. Adding that, she didn't think they would meet again. Her uncle wanted to know if our guy was the one that helped her to lead the obstinate wolf away last time. 
Yu Ying clarified that it's indeed our guy who saved her that day. Our guy said that it was nothing. Yu Ying introduced her uncle Liu with the nickname Killing the Wind and her younger brother with the nickname A Midsummer Night's Dream. Liu told our guy that he had some guts to come alone in the death zone and explained that this place is very different from the magic domain. The monsters are scarier, and there are a lot of foreign adventurers. There are often situations where people fight over monsters and items. Liu suggested that our guy join their team. Yu Ying's brother agreed with his uncle. He added that his uncle Liu is an excellent rank adventurer, so our guy would be safer if he joined them. After hearing what Yu Ying's brother said, our guy recalled the guidebook. According to the Magic Domain Guidebook, there are six levels. From newcomer, proficient, excellent, powerful, extraordinary to peak level. While Liu is extending his hand to our guy, Zhang Zi wonders that in front of him is an excellent adventurer and wants to team up with him. This is the first time he has come to the death zone, and it's very dangerous. So our guy decided to extend his hand and informed Liu that it was his first time in the death zone and it would be nice if he stick with them. Because of his answer, Liu gets fond of our guy personality. Yu Ying was very pleased because she didn't think our guy would accept her uncle's offer. After it was confirmed that Zhang Zi had joined Liu's team, Uncle Liu wanted to know each other's talents. If they run into each other in the future, they can cooperate with each other. Our guy agreed with him. Liu's talent is Ricochet, who can push the target back 10 steps while stunning them for 30 seconds. Yu Ying's younger brother's talent is an illusion that can last for an hour. However, the illusion is unable to fight. Yu Ying is the slash of light. When it is our guy's turn to show his talent, he thinks people will find out sooner or later about it. So he decided to show it to his teammates. Our guy summoned his Peltace Goblin and said that his talent is summoning art. The siblings were amazed at our guy's talent. While Liu is not so felt amazed. I think just a little, and it's not bad. Anyway, Yu Ying asks our guy if all his beasts listen to his orders. And our guy confirmed that his beasts are following all of his orders. After the introduction, the four continued their venture. They were stopped in a place where the villagers were fighting with those possessed by something. But Liu suggested that they should not mind them, instead focus on finding the boss first. Liu warns his teammates to stay close to him because the village is built like a maze, and each house looks the same. Our guy stopped and noticed that they had already been in the place. At the same time, the monsters came out and surrounded the four. Zhang Zi summoned his goblins and noticed Yu Ying's younger brother was terrified. Due to the high damage of the monsters, Zhang Zi's goblin was quickly defeated. The zombie rushed toward our guy, but before the monster's attack hit our guy, Liu quickly slashed the monster. Then Liu attacked another monster again. While fighting, suddenly, big lightning struck Liu. It turned out to be the mysterious professor who Liu had fought before. Using the wand, mysterious professor charged immense red energy. Because the lightning that hit Liu earlier had a paralyzing effect, he couldn't move. Mysterious professor unleashed his attack directly on Liu, resulting in a massive explosion. Because of his strength, Liu still managed to survive. When Yu Ying came to help, suddenly, an arrow headed straight for her head. Due to the sharpness of senses, Yu Ying was able to counter it. The one who attacked with the arrow was Spirit of the Night. Zhang Zi charged one of his goblins, but Harrison trounced the goblin, and our guy was amazed at Harrison's strength. As Liu stood up, the three opponents approached him. Using the wand, Mysterious Professor once again sent a bolt of lightning with a paralyzing effect on Liu. Liu knew that if what was happening continued, he would die along with his teammates, so he took out an activation potion and drank it. Mysterious Professor explains the potion's effect, it negates all debuffs for 30 seconds and comes with the cost of taking 20% more damage. Liu ordered Yu Ying to retreat immediately and not worry about him, but Harrison disagreed and tried to rush toward them. But with just one swing of Liu's sword, Harrison was sent flying away. Because Yu Ying understood the situation, they tried to leave. But before they left, Spirit of the Night landed a multiple seeking arrow. Luckily the three managed to run, and Yu Ying drew her sword then countered the arrows with a slash of light. However, an arrow still managed to slip through and hit Yu Ying in the chest. As soon as the arrow in the chest of Yu Ying was removed, the three ran away to hide. They stopped for a while when the three got away from the ongoing battle. Our guy noticed that he had one pelting goblin, one venom spider and three bosses left in his summon team. On the other hand, Yu Ying realized that her uncle might have fought the three foreigners before because they knew each other. Yu Ying's younger brother blames himself for what happened. Zhang Zi approached Yu Ying's younger brother to comfort him and said that his talent was strong and he just couldn't discover how to make it useful. At the same time, Yu Ying heard something behind them, and when they turned around, they saw a butcher of death, and it was the boss in this death zone. The three were shocked to see the boss. Zhang Zi told Yui to keep quiet because the boss didn't discover them yet. 
While the two siblings are asking Zhang Zi what they will do, Zhang Zi decides that they will kill the boss. On the other hand, Liu is able to escape the three. Spirit of the Night says that Liu is lucky that he escaped them and did not taste her revenge. Mysterious Professor told them that even though Liu manages to escape, with only 10% health Liu won't be able to survive if he encounters a bunch of monsters. Spirit of the Night wishes that Liu teleport in front of the boss and get killed by the Death Butcher. And suddenly, they notice the boss in front of them. The three get excited because they will become rich when they defeat the boss. They didn't waste time and immediately attack the butcher. Spirit of the Night lands a lot of arrows directly at the boss, but all of his arrows just go through. Mysterious Professor noticed that the boss was immune to the physical attack. Hence, he used his thunder fireball, but it just went through. Mysterious Professor was angry because they couldn't harm the boss. Harrison noticed the strangeness of the boss because he had never encountered anything like it. While on the other hand, Yu Ying's younger brother, who was holding the magic illusion ball, told the two to hurry because his illusion would only last for an hour. Our guy summoned all his beasts. Yu Ying was amazed at our guy when he saw the bosses. Our guy ordered his beasts to attack. The wolf quickly reached the butcher, and the butcher welcomed the wolf with a strong attack using his weapon in his right hand. Zhang Zi ordered the wolf to dodge, and the wolf managed to dodge the butcher's attack. The wolf used his dark shadow rip, and the boss retaliated using the death butcher. The boss attack sent the wolf flying away and received a lot of damage. As Zhang Zi expected from the death territory's boss, its combat ability was terrifying. The butcher mocked Zhang Zi's beasts. Yu Ying noticed that our guy's wolf was no match for the butcher, so she decided to help in the fight. Our guy orders his venom spider to use the spider web and it manages to trap the butcher. Yu Ying jumps toward the butcher and uses her slash of light, followed by the long-range beast's attack. Because of the damage he received, the butcher rushed toward the Goblin King. The Goblin is ready to block the butcher's attack. When the attack hit, the Goblin King could block it and survive the butcher's attack. The wolf attacked from behind, but the butcher noticed him and threw his weapon toward the wolf, resulting in the wolf's death. Zhang Zi decided to join the fight, and they all attacked together with his long-range beasts. Their attacks hit the butcher directly and were followed by Yu Ying's slash light. The butcher takes a lot of damage, causing a high reduction in his health. Zhang Zi warns her to be careful. When she steps aside, she was surprised to see the butcher running away. While our guy looks at the butcher with his back turned, eating rotten meat, he thinks about what the butcher is trying to do. The two notice that the butcher can recover his health by eating meat. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word illusion also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.